In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint weathered metal surfaces with dry brushing and oil washes. Welcome to the Artist Opus video. Today, we're going to be covering this kind of uh, warehouse flooring. Um, this is perfect for just painting terrain, sector mechanicus, uh, and it's absolutely brilliant for basing. You can change the color of paint I've used. Um, for I use turquoise, we could use yellow, you could use black, which looks great for contrast, both with the uh, metallic chips and then also the orangey rusty weathering afterwards, um, or any sand or pigment stuff like that. It looks absolutely amazing on a black background. Um, it's a very, very universal technique, nice and easy. Uh, it doesn't involve airbrushing or anything like that. And everything about it is pretty much hands-on, rough and ready, and there's no precision work. So if you like it, please give it a like please comment please subscribe put your suggestions down below and anything that is uh, frequently requested will jump straight to the top of our list for potential future content we've got salamander coming up or maybe he'll have come up just before this we're jumping around videos at the moment uh, flesh has been requested quite a lot as well so they are on our list for the future all right so stage one is basically going to be a kind of super rough stipple mix of our tm uh, rust colors which is a sequence through doom Bull, Scrag, um, Trollslayer Orange, and Fire Dragon Bright. So I'm using my uh, Yoldi, slightly beaten up large for this. And speed is the name of the game. We're not looking for precision at all. So I'm just gonna really quickly kind of smush base coat this. It doesn't have to be perfect or smooth even. And then just quickly jump through the colors. So being uh, being kind of rough and ready here is basically the point. Don't have any particular pattern in mind, just you know, rocketing through as fast as possible. And whatever you do, um, it probably won't be as extreme as it should be because when we're chipping this through randomly, it really, um, you, you need stuff to stand out as much as possible. Pull that back to orange, the Fire Dragon Bright is a little bit off. Okay, cool. Stage one done. Okay, stage two is AK's Heavy Chipping Fluid. You can airbrush this on if you want. Um, if you do, uh, maybe do a couple of layers um, I'm going to be brushing it on just with a uh, and very old size 3 that has seen better days. So this is going all over, putting it on neat and trying to keep it fairly thin. Now again, we're going to be working fairly fast on this. I've got myself a new large. Okay, so taking a little bit of the deep blue from scale 75. Pretty happy with a bit more than that. We are working super quick on this. We'll take a little bit of our Caribbean blue. Mix in a bit of our Sotec. And I'm just gonna pick one corner to kind of uh, fade in from. I hope you can see that color there. It's much easier to stipple this type of thing when it's nice and flat and solid. But I'm just gonna be picking one direction to come from, which is gonna be this top left side. Grab a little bit of our ice yellow. A little bit of our pastel blue. Now this is way brighter than our previous step, so proceed with care here, really making sure to not have too much excess on the brush. And these awesome little details should really uh, do a lot of the work for you in terms of basically picking themselves out and highlighting themselves. Generally speaking, I'm going uh, from this corner to this corner, but in order to catch these edges, I will go against them. As always, as I say with dry brushing, um, you don't want to go down the details, you want to go across them. So I'm going to catch it from each edge, just to make sure I catch the lips. And then it's just a matter of continuing, adding a little bit more of both of these into the mix. Now, of course, if you weren't doing the chipping stage, you could literally just paint it from the kind of turquoisey base coat, and that would be absolutely fine. So your final stages, taking a pure mix of these two, none of our previous turquoises in there. Just got a little bit of it uh, kind of residually in our brush. There we go, that's looking great. All right, time for the fun to begin. All right, I've given that a quick hair dry just to make sure it is completely dry because I'm working quite fast here. Now for the fun to begin. So this is always a little bit, um, it's a little bit random here. I'm gonna soak all the surface 
just with water. And then basically you can use whatever tool you wish just to uh, agitate that top layer of paint that you've put on over your chipping medium off. So uh, that could be with a toothbrush, it could be with toothpicks, uh, you could use um, just normal brushes if you're patient. It all depends on the amount of force that you've used. So I'm going to grab a brush that's definitely seen some better days and I've left too much paint on and we're just going to kind of patiently try and coax these details off here. So all of your edges will be the, they'll be the first places for it to go. Take some more water. and just patiently work your way along, agitating all of this off. Now I'm, I'm going from top left here, I shouldn't really be doing that, and that's just habits from previous stages. I'm just gonna carry on working at it. Carry on adding water. And soon we should really start seeing things kind of tipping off. There we go, look at that. All right, so it doesn't look like we've done that much, but we're just gonna go and wash itself under the tap and we'll see how it's worked. So hopefully that's showing up nicely on camera. That is looking great, really, really good. Okay, so we've got streaking grime here from AK. Again, we're using a brush we don't care about too much. I'm just using odorless white spirit here. Um, I'm sure someone will correct me and say you could use um, methylated spirits or something like that, uh, mineral spirits, but I do not have any to hand. So got a little Tamiya cotton bud, which are great like <laughs> precision cotton buds I might grab a bigger one too but I'm just going to go all over and kind of soak this up with a couple of different tools and um, leave it in the recesses all right so just dried that off a little bit and I'm going to come in with some pretty crazy bright rust deposits Just going to use these fairly sparingly. And again, I'll remove those in the same fashion. Really starting to build up some kind of interesting layers now, going through super quick. Um, just going to do one more rusty wash stage, slightly more drab one this time. Allow it to seep across all the areas that we want it to really build up. Don't want it anywhere too thick. There we go, so we'll hair dry that and then we'll come back for our final dry wash of the metallics and we are good. Famous last words, I, uh, I wanted some more contrast here so I'm just coming in with our light rust deposits. So with that dry, if I can stop fiddling with it, famous last words. I uh, should be on the last stage here. So the last step is simply to go back and those areas that we've put our, um, our metallics in. We want to make sure that they end up nice and shiny so hitting pretty much the same areas that we hit last time with our metallics with them again. You could absolutely stipple some chips on. I'm going to keep it fairly light and just concentrate it on outside edges. This isn't, I'm not looking to softly buff, buff the piece with highlights, I am looking to hit edges here. So you can put more paint on than you'd normally put on and perhaps use just a little bit less pressure. There we go, that really looks like it's had an extremely hard life. Loads of levels of detail on that, super easy. All of them really nice and fun, all of them pretty quick. And if you're doing this on a large scale, it would be uh, mega fast considering the quality and level of depth in the end result. That looks brilliant. Okay, so there is the finished base. Super effective, won't quite photograph accurately. It's a little bit brighter than that in real life and the weathering contrasts a little bit more heavily. Um, as I said in the intro, super solid, super fast, super flexible, uh, really enjoyable to do. And uh, particularly if you're doing this, all of these techniques, they feel a little bit time consuming when you're doing one, but if you're doing this on 20 bases or a large piece of terrain, you'd actually go so fast because most of the time for this is swapping between our various quick stages. Whereas if you're doing those stages across a load of stuff, then your swapping time is really mitigated. So 
a really, really efficient way to like base a, um, particularly basing uh, very organic 40K models, you get a really lovely contrast between, let's say, like Tyranids and then industrial basing. I really like that kind of juxtaposition you get between them. So please give the video a like, please subscribe if you haven't, hit that bell notification to see our future content. And as I always say, any suggestions for future content or comments or criticisms, pop them below. We read each and every one and we really, really appreciate the feedback.